Hello, this is the Art of Thinking Smart from Think Tech Hawaii. Welcome to downtown Honolulu. I'm here today with Meliana Meyer, who is one of those infinite hyphenates. <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to look that up, Michael. <laughs> She's an, an artist, a filmmaker, an author, and a community leader, just to get started. And she keeps all of those pieces together. And we're trying to understand how to think smart in this extremely fast-moving world. Just a, a brief note about what we mean by thinking smart. Let's say you're in your, you're in mid-20s and you have a brilliant idea for a new app that you just know that every, every kid is gonna wanna use on the internet. And you wanna become a company that gets bought by Google five years from now for $500 million. Okay. That's your vision, that's okay. your goal. Right. right. So right now at this moment, you probably have several things that you're thinking of. You need to raise some money. Right. You need to attract some talent. Correct. And you need to establish your brand, right? Those exactly. are three of the main things. Okay, I'm gonna so, write that down. Yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> you might think, okay, let's raise $10,000 with crowdfunding and we'll pay for a couple of months of development right. to raise money. You might think, well, Let's make a viral video that's gonna go on YouTube and Pinterest and get everybody watching it. It's gonna be funny, it's gonna be strange, it's gonna be silly, but it's about our great new idea. Okay. Right? And you might say, and I've got a friend in Columbus who I met at college who knows how to code, so I'll just have him do the coding for us. So those are three very immediate things that you could do. Okay. And in our short attention span culture, you might say, okay, let's go do them, right? You can knock those down and get them all going in one day, right? But those may not be consistent with your goal in five years of selling your company for $500 million to Google. Okay. So uh, someone who thinks smart will think, okay, I'm five years from now, we have the product, we have the finance, we have the people, we have the brand, everything is ready to sell to Google. What did I have to do to get here? So there's a visioning process. Right, a backwards a thinking by process. design, exactly. Right. Exactly, right. That's they, they call that systems integration. Right. That's how they got to the moon, by the way. Hmm. A bunch of engineers sat down in 1963 when President Kennedy said, we're going, and they said, okay, we're on the moon, let's figure out how we got here. Okay, that what makes do we great have sense. With us, right? All right. And I think that you do something like that mm -hmm. in a very different way. Right? Yeah. But your visioning is, is, has multiple steps built into it, right? Correct. And you're not always just responding to immediate, spontaneous opportunities. You're, you have a vision, you have a purpose. I was interested as we were preparing for the program today, just for 20 minutes, we were talking, and while we were talking, you were drawing. Correct. Right? So yep. <laughs> what were you doing here? Well, you know, <clears throat> I think what I want to share with you in, in thinking smart about um, work is that the work that I'm trying to do has to do with finding your passion, understanding what you can do with that passion and proceeding or going forward. And in terms of just thinking smart, it's not only the thinking part, it's the na'al part, it's the intuition part, it's the passion part. It's putting all of those things together. Mm -hmm. And as my sons are in their 30s and 40s, when I listen to them speak, they are forward thinking by design. They're saying, okay, this is an end goal, but my end goal isn't $500 million at Google, although maybe that's a good idea. My goal is trying to figure out what peace and justice and dealing with historical trauma um, can lead a community to in terms of wellness. Mm. So for me, this is really an important conversation because somehow we as a community have to do things differently. And by that I mean we have to sort of reach out to each other in ways that we haven't done before. Mm. So that's why I'm actually here and wanting to think smarter in terms of 
how do I position the work that we all are doing in community? Because there's great work that's being done mm. in all areas of our community. Mm. So I'm just one little piece, and it's a privilege to be here today. So you use the word na'au. Correct. For our non-Hawaiian speaking yeah. people, and we people watch this around the world. Correct. What is na'au? Na'au oh. is an important aspect, and for artists it's very critical because it's your sixth sense. It's the, your intuition, your instinct. So as an artist, you do call forth spirit, and you call forth um, all your ancestors, and you get out of your own way because it's not a thinking thing, art, so much as it's a, um, it's a, a holistic experience that has to do with all other senses and not just the intellect. So right. thank you for, for mentioning that. There's a reason that, about this, because it's really a bowl. It's a bowl, see? Oh. So I'm just trying to, to do something on the inside that's oh. going to... So, so that's for a, tomorrow. It's a three-dimensional thing. Correct. Absolutely. Oh. On a two-dimensional surface, yes. Right. Yep. So one of the things that you do that I find fascinating is you partner with one or more artists. Yes. And possibly with groups of Correct. young people who may not be artists at all, but are visioning people yes and to create a community image and it goes really very much against the Michelangelo uh, tradition of the Western artist which is the great genius who has a beautiful vision and executes yeah. it as a statement of his or her soul and it's a Mozart it's a, but this is there there may be a, a number of Mozarts and other people who are not exactly Mozarts but it creates a whole that may be greater than the sum of its parts, and it's an artistic statement. Absolutely. Well, when you're working with extraordinary friends who happen to be extraordinary artists to boot, and then we, we because I'm an educator, I always love to include young ones, students, or alaka'i, or apprentices. It makes for a community event. Mm. So that's really an important part or aspect of what we do, and, I, and it's very cultural. Collaboration, cooperation. It's like being in, in a canoe. If you if you think you can paddle a canoe by yourself, well then you don't know anything about paddling, mm. and you you're going to drown all by yourself. You know, in other words, you you need a crew of six. You need an you need a, a steersman. You need a first uh, first paddler who is your stroker, your second who calls. And in art, it's the same way. If you work in teams and you support everyone's interest area as in talent area mm -hmm. and you work ensemble together mm -hmm. so it's a very um ike hawaii a very um important aspect of knowing and understanding hawaiian culture to see mm -hmm. that because and even michelangelo he had apprentices mm -hmm. they just didn't get very much credit mm -hmm. whereas you know hawaiian style you want to give everyone who you work with yeah. that kind of credit yeah the yeah. person who's in charge is invisible yeah to the extent that that's possible. No, it, it is true because yeah. there's so many people involved and it is such a process that, uh, that calls forth everyone's talents. It's really exciting. And what you're describing, I think, is really useful for anybody who's building a team mm -hmm. to go after any objective. So that 20-something that person that we were just describing, he or she is going to need to have collaboration skills and be able to build a team that's diverse and yet unified at the same time. So this we're, we're talking Hawaiian culture here, right. and we're talking you know murals and art. Right. But I want people to be sort of doing a right brain, left brain translation of that as we go through. And it's because important because it's not one thing or another. And you don't have to choose between doing art and doing science. The whole part is to understand um, the complexity of the whole and know that it takes it takes everything to make things work you know well complexity yeah. and simplicity how do those interrelate from your creative process i think and that's that's actually a really good question I, and i think most um like innovators and problem solvers you just try to go to the core of what you want to say like this mural that we are, have worked on it's called um, aina aloha is aha aina aloha i mean it's this gathering of love for the land and you see the work and what it does is it gives a message it's a story but within the story there are specific 
um, um, iconic images. So what you try to do from the sim simple, s simplifying point of view is to get to those essential messages and then expand so that people can see something in its totality. Right. So then, then you can understand the complexity. And what you'll be seeing with the mural uh, project is, is a very unusual opportunity because it's a two-sided mural installation. Typically, murals are one-sided. Mm. But Where does the wall go? Exactly. The wall is actually in the middle because now it's an installation. You have to walk around it. Oh. So the original piece is 6 by 20 feet, mm. and it was painted by Al Lagunero, Kahi Ching, Solomon Enos, Hari Nani Orm, Carl Powell, and myself. Mm. And this was uh, an invitation and a challenge to these artists must have been, a, been a pretty big garage you were working. We were. We actually worked at Camp Mokalaia. Uh, oh, yeah. And we worked at the Bishop Museum as well. Uh -huh. But we, we, the challenge for everyone was to paint away sorrow and pain and historical trauma. So that is what we did. And there's a mural, and we'll give you a link for that mural um, so you can see it. But after we finished this mural on one side, they said, but we're not done with the pain part. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, well. I'm sorry, it's all under this mural and we've got it documented. And you guys, we've done what, what I thought we could do. How do you feel? We're still not done dealing with the pain. Oh. So then they decided to uh, paint on the other side. So that's what you're gonna experience when you see the mural. Well, let's see the mural. You yeah. actually brought a small scale reproduction I, I of it. I did, I'm not sure. Yes, they have it. Yes. Yes, you have it, guys. Let's put it on the screen yeah, here. Yeah, that'd be great. Yes. So, so it is starts, this the first side? Um, yes, it is the first this side. This is the first pane, is it? Um, actually, it this is the first painting. Left? It goes from right to left. From right to left. So we're actually, we're, you're seeing it in its totality now, and then oh. I'm going to start with this story on the right as it's coming up. We start with the Kumulipo, which is, you can see the polyps on the far right. Yeah. And then the second image is an image of um, Ki'i, Kahiko, old things and traditions. Oh. The next piece is um, Brother Haloa, Nakalau Kapulili, Brother Keep Kalo, adding. exactly. And then we come to the Kupuna Mountains, the Elder Mountains, and Spirit is in the middle. With, and it's makaku and creativity, which is the oh. most important. Is that the white light? Is yes, the, 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 the two birds okay. representing that. And on the bottom of the mural, it's all grounded by aina, that which feeds us. Aina is land. Correct. And on the left, you have these umeke, these calabashes that you can see wind coming out of. So they represent our protocols oh. and our language and the revival of our customary practices. And then you have something that looks like a, a, a lele, an altar. Oh. which is um, being used today at Pu'ukohala and other places to give offerings. Yeah. And then we have um, an image of a young boy who is really a stand-in for the next generation. And he is wearing a, an ahu'ula, which is a cape uh, of innovation, of new ideas. So it looks like feathers, but it's really very much in keeping with Think Tank and all these great programs. And mm. the, uh, to, the left of, to the left of him is an avatar image mm. that uh, Kupuna, an elder, is holding for him to assume mm. w when he's ready and willing. So this whole new generation of youngsters um, have that kuliana or responsibility so to do the work. We're kind of going from the beginning of time Correct. until today. <laughs> and we have this young we person have this ready to... We young re person hopefully okay. ready to take, assume the mantle of this new so image. You used a very interesting phrase. You said, painting away our pain. Yeah. Talk a little bit more about, because I'm seeing some of what you're talking about. Yeah. To my eye and feeling, this looks insightful and deep and hopeful and joyous it's serious you it's know, very serious but it's not it's not frivolous it's not necessarily fun yeah but um you have that there were six artists connected Correct. with painting this Correct. Did, did each artist take on one subject and paint it and then no, you figured out how to merge you. them no or thank you what? for asking because the piece was actually done um successfully in a week's time because everyone moved. 
So oh. that's the process that, that, I, oh. that I challenged everyone to. And so this is the sixth piece we've done, or seventh mural we've done. We've done murals at the, the convention center, the Bishop Museum, Camp Mokalea. And so this being a traveling mural has gone internationally to um, healing conferences and things. Oh. And you'll see on the other side, if we can show the other let's side. Let's show the second one. Let's do that because what you're going to experience is that this the, is the completion correct are we also going right to left on this no one, this or? this side you can enter um, from any position okay. so it's it's very abstract and mm -hmm. it's meant to to bring people to um, pain and sorrow and oh. historical trauma in a way that the other side got painted away oh. so so the kupuna hype I've talked to they've also said we like this piece because we can talk about the pain I see so the, this is I see a, the yeah, blood there. yeah blood and gore yeah. and yeah. and disease and death and sorrow and to the left of center there I there's something that looks like some hands they or are is that hands meditation they or? are hands uh. and then you have this incredible teal um, tessellation these little um, portals mm. of healing so it's not the Guernica of, of Picasso that was doom and mm. darkness exclusively it was actually this piece allowing for the healing from the other side of the mural to come through in these little pieces of teal so it's a really uh, novel idea that happens to to um, engage mm. the viewers and it's meant to go along with the film project that that I'm trying to finish because this is outreach for the film I so do the, see yeah. the Guernica character of this. yeah yeah for those who may not be familiar just Google Guernica, yeah. G-U-E-R-N-I-C-A, yep. is the great masterpiece of By Pablo Picasso, Picasso yeah. in the time of the Spanish Civil War, Correct. capturing the, the, the blood and the death, the anarchy, yeah. the, the, uh, the Civil War, brother yeah. against brother, sister yeah. against sister, yeah. kind of. It's a very painful piece. Uh, I don't, have you ever seen it live? Yes, I have. It's a it's, very large piece. It's hard to approach. It is hard to approach. <laughs> and actually, this it's piece. It's still dripping. You're right. And this yeah. piece is too, Michael, um, because people have responded to that red side. And it's so hard, the red side, so I'm really grateful to say, please, if, if, if you need a moment, walk to the other side. Let's so. take a break for okay. a moment to Thank walk you. to the other side. Thank you. Aloha, I'm Kaui Lucas, host of Hawaii is My Mainland, here on Think Tech Hawaii every Friday at 3 p.m. We address issues of importance for those of us who live here on the most isolated landmass on the planet. Please come join me Fridays at 3 p.m. Mahalo. Aloha, this is Kelee Akina with the weekly Ehana Kako. Let's work together program on the Think Tech Hawaii broadcast network, Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m. Movers and shakers and great ideas. Join us. We'll see you then. Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov, and I'm the host of Law Across the Sea. And Law Across the Sea is a program that brings attorneys who have traveled across the sea and live in Hawaii or are staying in Hawaii for a time to talk about their travels, where they're from, where they're going, and bring it all together because really we're all connected some way, although we travel across the sea. So I hope that you'll tune in and watch our program. Thank you very much. So we're back here now with Meliana Meyer on Thinking Smart. And uh, Meliana's making us smarter and smarter by the moment here. <laughs> I feel my IQ rising. <laughs> And Most my kindly. EQ also, my emotional yeah. quotient is, yeah. there we is go. being nourished. And that's a very big part of success of any kind. Yeah, now, absolutely. Now, let's, uh, let's go to another example okay. that I find fascinating. Um, this was something that was done for Hawaii International Forgiveness Day. Correct. Last summer. And it was um, One a, of our a artists. community mm -hmm. visualization that was done by Solomon Enos. Correct. And in this video, you'll see 90 minutes compressed into just about three minutes. And what he was, well, you set it up, you talk. Well, you need to know that working with uh, Solomon and the others uh, in our work together is a real gift because they are generous of spirit. They are insightful. They are able to do extraordinary work or we are together ensemble because we have a collective vision mm. so i think in terms of the forgiveness project 
they too or we too all share that vision of working towards forgiveness. So when Solomon was asked to do this piece, he was listening to extraordinary um, presenters. He was listening to Ramsey Tom. He was listening to Fred Luskin. Fred Luskin. Yeah. He was listening. Talking about gratitude. Exactly. But very much Western approach and Hawaiian approach. Exactly. So, so when you have Saul working like this, he's working to create uh, um, a vision of wellness through the creative modality of the visual. And there's a live audience of a it couple of people. It is a live people. audience, correct. Yeah, up on the Pali. Right. So the people in the audience are participating in a way exactly. as well. Exactly. And they will be asked to contribute as well. But this is, um, Solomon does this very, very well in terms of setting up um, what we call uh, an underpainting or a, a sketch, a working sketch that others can um, begin to work with. Mm. When we work as a group, uh, we all participate in this process mm. and create an image together and then um, grade and scale up together. So mm -hmm. the process is very vital um, to, to set up, to engage, to talk about what you vision and the result then is something extraordinary um, that you're seeing right now. It is uh, his vision of what the conversation moves him to create. Mm. So, so there's images within images. There's exactly. landscapes, there's faces, Correct. there's vegetation, there's um, stars, there's... There's a worldview yeah. there. Yeah. There's a perspective there of the world and of forgiveness that... And he's uh, making it spontaneously exactly. without any plan. He's not tracing or anything. No, no, no. It's, yeah. it's all coming from yeah. his, his now, <laughs> uh -huh. his gut, his instinct about what the conversation uh, has, has given to him. Solomon also does very carefully conceived, quietly um, executed masterpieces, yes, I, would, he does. I would call them. Yes. If you just Google Solomon, Enos, E-N-O-S, then you can see more samples of, of what he does. Absolutely. But this is one that is that was created as a community work of art. And after this was done, I understand the 200 people came up and colored it all in. That they did. Yeah. And you know, that experience is very different because it's spontaneous and you accept different things happening so you don't really have attachment to the completion of it necessarily, yeah. but it's the experience of participating. Mm -hmm. So it's really, it's really what we're trying to do with the forgiveness work that we all participate in. It's engaging people in understanding that we all have a part in both healing and forgiveness. Mm -hmm. So it's not one side or another, it's all of us doing the work together. And you can see a lot more about of this at Hawaii Forgiveness Project. Correct. Org. Correct. Absolutely. And I understand you're going to be talking about this mural. Yes. The Aloha Aina mural. Right. So that is love of the land. Love of the mural. land and Aina Aloha is also that the land cares for and loves us, um, which is the name of the, the film project. So that's at so, the uh, that's at the Bodhi Tree here in Honolulu. Is it the Bodhi Tree or yeah. is it the Jew? It's uh, the Bodhi it? Tree. Okay. Yeah. Okay. At uh, on Judd Street. Okay. Near downtown Honolulu. Okay. And that's at 4 p.m. Tomorrow. tomorrow, Friday. Okay. Yeah, so Four to six. Everyone so here is invited there. to come. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. So forgiveness. Now, this is a loaded word for lots of people. And it takes some study, some feeling, some understanding right. to even grasp it, especially in the context of Hawaii, Hawaii. and our original people yeah. and the overthrow and the queen. Can you paint in some of the details there? I just well, you know, it, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's not a hard story to tell because it's been written. It is very clearly um, available for everyone who lives in Hawaii to know the truth about what's going on. So once you know the truth, then we have the responsibility, each and every one of us, to find out more mm. and see if we agree or not. But truth is the truth. I mean, mm. it either happened or it didn't. Mm. So there's no alternative reality going on here. Mm. And so the important part is... There's no fake news? No, involved. no fake no. news. <laughs> Although uh, it, Hawaii has had a very difficult um, uh, relationship with all of that, just mm. given its... Um, given its history in terms of the overthrow and, and who's run things and yeah. who's been in charge. But you know, Lili Okalani is our 
fearless leader because she was a woman of faith yeah. and she was a woman of justice and she loved her people and her land and that's what all of us in all of these different areas today are doing. And We're this practicing was 120 Pono. years ago. That is correct. These events, but correct. they're still very much alive in the hearts and feelings of the Hawaiian people. And, they, sh and they will never, they're still happening. they will never go. And yeah. my aunt, Aima Navahi, for example, and Joseph, they were royalists who were, were um, uh, lovers of the land and Lili'u, so she was a confidant of the queen. So the work I do is a continuation of, of her work. And I humbly just ask always for the permission to, to do the work and to be of service to, to, to the people, because so we have a lot of work to do. Your link to the queen is coming literally from your now. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm grateful about that, because each of us has a responsibility to assume a mantle or to make a difference in community. So if someone wanted to understand both the triumph and the tragedy that's right. represented by the overthrow right. and didn't know anything. I think that you could probably Google Iolani Palace and read from there, and there are other links that will come up through A there. Absolutely. And so you can Iolani read is I-O-L-A-N-I right. with an Okina up before right. the I. So Iolani Palace right. is a few blocks from here. Correct. And it was a place where something really extraordinary uh, terrible yep. and something extraordinarily beautiful and poetic happened. Can you just well, tell so, us a little so, bit? So many things. This palace was built by Kalakaua, Liliuokalani's brother, and it was to represent to the world that Hawaiians were people of, of justice, intellect, and regard of, 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 of law, the rule of law. Mm. And it stands as an emblem for us today mm. of this of this leader's um, deep intellect and understanding of world events. Mm. So for us too, Lili'u's story is one that we all can em embrace. And actually, there's a book called Hawaii's Story by Hawaii's Queen, which yeah. is really important to read. So please yeah. feel free to do that and just know that each of us um, needs to not only think smarter, but, but, but be appreciative of the context within which we live and understand that there there are lots of negotiations that need to go she on. She confronted yeah. injustice yeah. and violence and abuse and terror with forgiveness. For, with forgiveness Say, and yeah. And and a call for justice. Call for justice that we but, are still responding to today. Yeah, but yeah. it's motivated by forgiveness. And motivated so by love. tomorrow at 4 p.m. we'll go deeper Thank you. and look into this mural. Thank you so deeply. much, Michael. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Aloha. Aloha. Bye.